Hey guys, LV here. As you can see from the title, we are going to review another album today. As always, the albums I do are requests, and the album that was requested was Boa's Made in 20 album. This album was requested by the user um, Darren Smith, I believe, and um, he requested that I do an album, another album from Boa, which I was really excited of doing because um, I don't see enough things about Boa, so I figured why not just put some stuff up about her. So let's see what my opinions are on Boa's um, album <laughs> Made in 20. Okay, the first track is Lady Galaxy. This opening truly showcased Boa's new mature side. And I really like this speaker we hear, like Boa's like speaking through an airplane phone or something, like a microphone or something like that. It sounds really Americanized, like this track. It sounds so Americanized that it's not even funny. And even though it sounds like this hip hop um, and R&B merged into one, it surprisingly came out really good, especially since this was a pretty, this was a pretty bold move for an album opener. And Lo, um, Boa's um, low pitched vocals match with the song's synthetic sound very well, at least I thought so. So this easily ranks as a great opening for any album, like, well, this is for this album, yeah, so, really good opening. This song coming after Lady Galaxy was rather weird, <laughs> at least I thought so, but it doesn't, surprisingly, it doesn't seem out of place to me, and despite the song's sugary pop sound, I still thought it fitted rather nicely because I really do like this song. Like, this was like one of the. I wouldn't say like. No, I wouldn't say that. It's not like the first I've heard from Boa, but this is like one of those songs where I can really appreciate Boa's vocals because she really sounds like she's really happy here. Like, you can hear the smile. Like, you can literally see the smile in her voice. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But, um. Overall, her vocals are the, mo the most key thing in this song. They're very heartwarming to listen to, and I really like this song. So, hopefully, you can enjoy this song and feel like the love of her vocals as well. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. The next track is Winter Love. This was also a popped influence track, but it was in the form of a sweeping ballad. This was a beautiful winter ballad. It captured me from the moment when I first heard, um, first heard it. It has more of this um, metallically feel to it, but I sometimes find it even more prettier than a joyful winter song. And like, cause the like, you really get to hear that too within her vocals because right now she sounds rather hesitant, but as the song carries, it gets more and more intense, and I love that. Especially the bridge. The bridge to this song was so heavenly. I love this part. This part was so epic. This was like the most epic part of this song. Oh my gosh. Like, when I first heard this, I was like, I squealed because this was done so good. And, well, you won't hear it yet, but when this electronic, this electric tar kicks in, oh my gosh. It made me fall in love with this song even more. <laughs> this is overall, this is one of Boa's most beautiful as wintery ballads. I can never get tired of this song. Beautiful song. Two thumbs up. This song is Still. I really like this tune. It, it's, it would have a very, um, it was a very nice jazz influence tune that really consisted really of low key strings and some piano, and you hear a bit of that acoustic guitar. And I really like how, in the first verse, she speaks entirely in English. Although you have to, like, li so somewhat listen, like, like, strain your ears to hear what she's saying, because her English here was a bit iffy. This is, I believe, when she was starting to learn English, so her English was still, like, really not, like, all that great, but it was really good. And... 
The chorus to this song was pretty darn catchy, admittedly, because usually most like tracks that are not really the main like vocals, they're not really all that great, but this song, it re was really good, and I really like this song. And so anyway, <laughs> the chorus, I thought, was the best part of this song. And I even like, I, even though her English was a bit, bleh, I still liked her use of English here because it was pretty cute to me and I really liked it, so I don't care. The next song is So Real. I love this song. It had this great aggressive beat to it and her vocals here were on point. And I like the fact that she used this um, progression beat along with the syncs you hear in the background. Um, it really created something wonderful in my opinion. And overall, this is, a, this is a wonderful dance tune. I dance to this song quite often. Like I could be in the kitchen, like making a simple dish and I have this song playing in the background because this is a really good song to dance to and I really like it. Like, I can be doing anything. Like, I can be doing my homework, reading a book, anything, and I have this song in the background. Because, like, this is a really good song. <laughs> the next song is Key of Heart. She drifts back into that, into the pop genre with this song. Of course, that's not a bad thing, of course. Because I still thought this was a really pretty song. With the most sweeping arrangement. Well... I won't say that, but it has a really good string arrangement, and I love those la 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 la's. I love those, um, cause it makes the the atmosphere um even more joyful and fun, and I really do like this song. The lyrics to this song are a bit on the cheesy side, but it's a sweet song nonetheless, and I really like how her vocals sound right here, cause she sounds quite calm. But it's beautiful, and it makes it sound more spectacular to me. And um, when the, when she reaches like the chorus, she sounds so lively and happy that you can't help but just sing along with her. Like I play this song when I'm in the car or something, and it just it's really just fun to sing along to. And I really like it. Back <laughs> is our love to my parents. I really I like this song for two reasons. One, this is like the first song, well, from my experience, this is the first song I've seen that Boa wrote, wrote herself. Because I do know within this era, Boa didn't really write that much songs. Like she, It was mostly her staff that wrote her, that wrote her songs. The next reason why I like this is because this ballad was a bit on the more R&B influence side and I really like that because I'm a big fan of R&B ballads and I love her the combination of that piano and the gentle bass beats within this song. She really uses she uses her vocal abilities very well in this song. Her high notes are higher and prettier than ever in this song. The lyrics to this are extremely touching since Boa wrote this herself in regards to her parents. This was like more of a thank you letter to her parents. And I don't believe anyone but Boa can pull this song off. I really like this song. It's really beautiful. She did a great job with this song. Excellent track. The next song is No More Make Me Sick. Ugh. Bit of Englishy, but it's okay. This song, it trans in into a more slower dances track, but it headed into a suitable direction. At least I thought so. It it has a very nice tempo, and that can be very good because sometimes a song without a good tempo makes the song lack, and it doesn't really want to make you listen to it. But this song, it was surprisingly really good, and I really like it. Despite the funny title, it's still a nice song, and I really like it. And, as always, vocals, um, Boa's vocals sound on, on point. I can never really say anything critical, because her vocals always sound good. The highlight of this song definitely is the chorus. The way it changes, the overall setting is excellent, and it's epic and very mem mem um, memorable. So. I do like this song. Good. Okay, the next song is Revolution Code. 
1986, 11.05, <laughs> sorry. Um, I have mixed feelings about this song. If I had to be honest, I will say Boa's not doing anything wrong. It's just this annoying rapper we hear that's keeping me from saying that this is one of my favorite songs off this album. He's not doing anything to contribute to this song. Because Boa, Boa sounds really good and on key, and she's really trying to, like, make me, um, she's really trying her best to make this song, like, to sell the song to me. And all, and all that rapper, well, we haven't got to him yet, but you, you'll hear him soon enough. But all he's doing is just yelling throughout the song, and it completely ruins it for me. But despite his annoying presence, I will say that this song is definitely the most aggressive track on this album because of its extensive use of brass and consistent beats. This song would have been much better if this rapper wasn't included because his voice, well, his contribution here in general was just plain awful. The next song is Your Color. This is the final power ballad that was based on this album, and it doesn't disappoint. As usual, just listening to the music, Boa showcases her powerful vocals during the chorus when we reach there. Her voice sounds incredibly lovely as usual. I can never say anything bad about her vocals. She has, so, her, she is so talented. Boa, she has so... Her voice is so beautiful to listen to. I can never really find anything bad to say about it. And, as, and she proves it well in this song because when it reaches the chorus, Boa showcases her powerful vocals, which blend it very well with the prominent string arrangement. This was such a beautiful ballad, you guys. She puts everything in her voice. She, and she gives this most amazing performance without over singing a single note. Such perfection. Only she can do this. Next song is Prayer. Hmm. Her vocal style here is, I would say it's on the sultry side. Especially in, an, I, when you hear this beat, you really wasn't, I really wasn't sure what this was doing. Because this could be anything. This can go into like this sort of like really weird track. But when she started singing, it really, um, I really started to like it. So, it's like I really like it. This is like something you would listen to like when you're like exercising or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, much like other songs on this album, it has this really strong synth arrangement that makes itself quite known in the song. It's not my most favorite song, but it does have its own attitude that I can appreciate. So, good job for that. The next song is Candlelights. This song was a bit more on the, it was, again, this song was a bit more R&B inspired. And you get to, we even get to hear some of these Spanish guitars on some parts. I really like this song. It has this thumping beat that makes it the most unique aspect of this song. And as always, I need to stop, but... Her vocals, again, sound excellent. And they sound, they fit the, the mood of this song. They really do. And this is a really good song to listen to when you're like, when you're like, just, you know, relaxing. It's a really nice song, and I really do like this. Good job, Boa. <laughs> the next song is Gracious Days. This is the final track off the album before we reach the bonus track that I believe that was included here. This song, it was very lighthearted. It was a very lighthearted, fluffy kind of song. I'm really glad Boa hasn't forgotten her pop roots, and this song is a perfect example of that. Her vocals, while they're not really doing anything all too impressive on this song, the music here is short to knock you out because I really did like the music here. Because it maintains the strong pop sound that I always loved from Boa because she showcases that perfectly. And I guess that's just one of the things I really do like about this song, so 
next song is Last Christmas. And this is one of my most favorite songs. Um, I believe it's um, by the artist Wham, I believe. Because um, I listen to this every Christmas. My mother always plays this song. And my mother's a, like an oldies type of um, girl. And she plays this song. And I was really happy when I saw Boa covering this song. Um, surprisingly, her English isn't so bad. I can understand her 90% of the time. I can understand her. And since I know this song left to right, I practically know what she's saying anyway. So maybe that's probably one of the reasons why I can understand what she's saying probably. <laughs> but anyway... Despite her English, I really do like this song. She made it much, much more Christmassy with those bells and that expressive, um, and that impressive sync sound. And as a massive fan of this song, like I kept saying countless times, I know the song inside and out. And I was quite impressed with Boa's version, which is a rarity in itself because usually when people cover people's songs, they're usually not that good. But. Boa, she made it her own, and it's really, and it she really owns it. So, okay, so Made in Twenty was a really good album. I'm really glad that she was experimenting with new styles to the, of music, because it was like she was again, once again, recreating herself into a much more mature artist. Because um, Boa, like, like she's she debuted very young, and it seems like her music was more like like party, like more like on the less serious side, but with this album she showed a more mature side of her and I thought that was really 20 because I believe um, it was really good because that's why I believe it was called Made in 20 because uh, you know Boa's growing up, she can't be that child star forever so it was really nice that she showed this um, this mature side because it really shows within the countless tracks of this album so yeah. And then now I'll show you the pictures. And here's the front. I really loved this cover. This was the most this was a beautiful picture of Boa. I really like that. Here's the back. So beautiful. And then here is the C D. Very beautiful. And then let me show you. I bought the CD DVD version of this. So, here's the DVD version. Very pretty. I really like these. And then here we are. As always, Boa never fails to impress me. Vocal-wise and picture-wise. Because these are some... Beautiful screenshots of her. Very beautiful. And this is a lovely smile. I love this smile. So cute. I like the fact that they caught random um, chicks. Her like she looks. She's just dancing. Just having fun. Really cute. <laughs> Lovely. And here are the credits. If you want to see. And the last screenshot of our cute boa. So cute. <laughs> she displayed quite a um, variety of styles within this album. It went from peaceful ballads to the realms of classical J-pop mixed with that tinge of hip-hop. Although some fans I know may not appreciate that style with um, that change within this style, I for one enjoyed it because I thought it suited, it suited um, all those genres suited quite well with her voice and it gave the song more or most of the songs a bit more of a energetic tone to it if you know what I mean overall lovely material from our pop diva and I do love this so one of another one of my favorites from Boa as always um, 
thank you again for watching my review. Um, I do hope you enjoyed it, and I do hope the user Darren Smith enjoys my review as well. Um, as always, if you have a person you would like me to do a review on, just leave it in the comments below, or inbox me, it's fine. And I'll be sure to do it sometime in the future. And with that, thank you guys for, I guess, commenting and liking my videos. I really appreciate it. And I thank you again for, um, I guess, taking the time to watch this. <laughs> so, thank you again. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.